Hey, welcome back. Uh, the other day, the wife hands me this and says, um, on a vase. Uh, she found something, stuffed all these sticks in it from out in the yard. I think they may be walnut. I think she pulled them out from under the walnut tree or off the walnut tree. And she's cut them down and stuck them in here. So what I think I'm going to do is take it over there and cut these off flush with this. And then, it, I don't know if you can see the green thing over there. That's the lid for this. So if I cut it off flush, hopefully I can pour the resin in, put that lid on, hold everything down like it's supposed to. Keep it in there anyways, and then uh, she wants a color too. I don't, a lightly tinted, but she kind of wants a hourglass type shape to it, not so much a bud vase. We'll see what we can do. Let's get started. Okay, so she wants purple, and I think red and blue make purple, right? <laughs> Not sure how much. I know this isn't really that bad, so we'll give that a drop. And we'll give this a drop. That might be more purple than I wanted. <laughs> we'll see, huh? I'm going to need more, so I think I'll... Uh, Probably mix up some clear and thin that down a bit. Well, it's kind of purple. Maybe it just looks dark because it's in there. <laughs> All right. Get those in the way, do we? Can you see what I'm doing? Side's about to make a mess. Well, that's kind of purple. got me to about here. It's not really going to work, is it? <laughs> not like I wanted. Teep. It is. So this is uh, Illuminite Slow. And I use Illuminite Blue, which is all over me, as you can see. And Red. Hopefully it'll make purple. And I need to get it in the pressure pot so that, uh, <laughs> well, you know, because it's going to set up on me. Okay, out the pressure pot. Now, I knew when I did this that I was going to have to cut this off. This, my mold is basically just, uh, you know, garbage anyways. They're number twos, if you can see it. So it shouldn't stick to it. And I knew, based on the rim, that I'm going to have to cut it off when I poured it. It's purple. <laughs> that may be a problem down in there.
Okay, so what I think I'm going to do, it's been a while since I worked on this. I have a really good bite on it back here, and I'm not worried about it coming off. I'm worried about hollowing this out. So I think I'm going to drill down as far as I can go to a certain point with a, a smaller, and go with the biggest one I have, the Forstner bits, and then uh, I'll be able to put it in the chuck this way. After I hollow it out, we'll see where it goes from there. But I, I think because I have a good bite on it now, I'm worried about if I put a mortise in the bottom of this, it flying off while I try to hollow it because that's a long reach in there. That's kind of why it's been on hold because I wasn't quite sure how to do it. And then I, I need to do some filling in these up here because the, the centers are all rotten and hollow and falling out. For now, I think I'm going to drill a hole in it. Maybe I'll go all the way down through it. I don't, we'll, we'll see as I go. Okay, so I don't have the capability to reach down in here safely. I'm not comfortable with it. I can get all this, so I'm gonna take this off and put a mortise in here so I can hold on to it again. I got a lot to fix in here. Uh, this old rotten wood, the, the cores are the cores are gone. So there, this one's all gone. So I need to fix all that. But I want to get this rounded over and get the mortise in the bottom. That way I can hold on to it and work from the other side. I don't have this ugly mess on the back to figure out how to get off.
Okay, so I'm gonna hold it in place here for now just to stabilize it. I need to clean this up and then probably treat these all with CA and that. Um, I've done all this and Yorkshire grit, the microfine, that whole trio. And then I sprayed it with lacquer. I first cleaned off the oils and that, but uh, I had to get that done because I won't be able to touch this after I mess with the inside of here. So, so I'm gonna try to clean that up and maybe give this a little bit more shape it's pretty close here, but I'm okay there. Okay, well I'm going to fill these all up with some CA and get that all set up, come back when that's done. Okay, so since I don't have any way to support this, I'm just gonna make it real easy. I only need to taper dub out here. I'm just gonna kind of roll this over and take all the cuts nice and easy. And I'll finish it when I'm done with all that. I'm just gonna mix up some clear resin after I sand this as good as I can. And then just let the resin run down and fill the bottom. And hopefully it looks good. gonna take forever. Okay, so what I got is a pre-catalyzed lacquer. Stuff dries pretty quick. And this is a furniture grade lacquer that I used when I was doing kitchen cabinets. I had to thin it down in order for it to go through the little, the little spray gun. So it's just thinned down with lacquer. It'll dry sand. I'm just gonna do the outside of it and maybe in here. And tomorrow, well not for you guys, but tomorrow I will 
mix up some lacquer, or not lacquer, but resin, just a little bit, so that I can seal the rest of this down in here. And I'll just paint it around this and let it run down the bottom, settle on the bottom, it'll settle flat, seal the bottom, hopefully. That's the plan. Right now I'm gonna spray this. Let it uh, let it set, sand it. Don't really have to do a whole bunch. Uh, super fine sandy sponge. Just gotta knock the glaze off of it so the next coat fits and it should look like glass. Oh well, yeah, I'm gonna run the speed down to 100 RPMs. Slow as I can get it. <laughs> Cause it doesn't come out of here real heavy and you want it to go on wet so we don't have any overspray, but not run. Yeah, we'll let that dry and sand it up and put another coat on. Okay, so for what I forgot to tell you was this is a two-part lacquer. You got a sanding sealer also. I'm not using the sealer on this because I have some leftovers from the, the Four Nugget video that I could not put back into the gallon because I mixed mica powder in it, give it a gold flake when I did that project. So I'm just trying to burn that up. I was right at the moment. You know, I get equal parts, and if I put it back, then I got mica powder in it and all that good stuff. But right now, you can still kind of see the scratches. That's the idea for the sanding sealer is you sand it out till the scratches are gone. You fill them, and then you lay this top coat on it. But I'm just kind of using this as a top coat. But that's what we have right at the moment. I'm pretty happy with it. It didn't come off the lathe. That's a bonus. <laughs> but I need to sand it. I did spray all the way up inside there uh, just to try and seal the wood so that I didn't have any air bubbles when I do put the, the lacquer in. So I intend to fill that whole mess down there with a set it straight up and just keep bringing the, the resin up until that's all covered up to about this rim here. Oops, you're too close. Up to about the rim here. Just let it run back down and hopefully I can get an even coat all the way down. I'm looking at the part and not the camera. I'm happy with it. I can see through it. I couldn't, I didn't have the correct tools to go far enough in here. There's a little bit of gold flake in there. I can see it, see it sparkling. <laughs> I tried to stay out of it. I just didn't have long enough tools. Um, I could get all the way to the bottom, but I was coming up on the, on the tool handle and it was just, it was too, too far of a reach for me. So I didn't go that far. I did a little bit, a little bit into here. Uh, I just didn't want to go that far. I didn't feel comfortable with it and it probably wasn't safe to begin with. So I'll go back over to the other camera here because this is pretty dry. And then I'll give this a quick sand and we'll spray some more. Okay. And then it's just uh, scuff it up. Although I can't get all the way down in there. Truck's in the way. Yes, I can. I got one that's got a 45 on it. All thinking, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> I've been struggling with finishes. Lacquer finish works the best. This stuff I know how to use. I know I did use the Yorkshire grit and the microfine on here, and I did clean it with denatured alcohol after that to get any kind of oily residues or anything off that may have been left behind for that. So that my lacquer sticks. I don't really want to do in here too much. And we'll go round two. Now this stuff melts right back into itself. So I only intend to do like the rim. Well, it'll go further into that, but in, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all get it? <laughs> uh oh, hang on, I got to perform surgery. Okay, surgery complete. And now I'm watching the overspray because I want this really wet, but no runs. You see how that goes? There you have it. It's purple. <laughs> I would have liked to have gone into here, but like I said, I don't have the tools long enough to reach in there. I haven't actually 
see in there. Yeah, see, I didn't, I didn't do the resin yet. Um, Y'all get the idea. I was just gonna mix it up and let it run down the sides and smooth everything out and fill that bottom in nice and flat, and pretty much seal it so that it will hold water. So, but there you go. It's got a little bit of sparkles on it. Turned out better than I thought it was. I was a little worried about doing that in there, getting this here. Uh, if you like it, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed and you're just joining me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, the little purple, I guess that's a bud vase. I don't know. Maybe it's too big for a bud vase. But it's a purple vase. I'll finish this up. And I just, like I said, I don't think you all want to watch that. There you go. I'll put pictures up. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.